What's up guys, it's me Jeremy. League of Legends is a great game and the mechanics and the design of League in the early days really shaped how the game developed over the years, but in the early days of League of Legends, before the beta even began or was available, there were quite a few changes and decisions that Riot chose to make that set the course for League of Legends forever. So join us today in taking a look all the way back before its release in February 11th, 2009, that's when the alpha first came out, to find out what League of Legends could have been. Now I do want to give a bit of a disclaimer before we start, we have talked about a decent amount of the information in this video before, but I kind of just wanted to put together this full comprehensive piece to show off what League as a whole could have been. And do keep in mind that these are pretty much all things that happened before the actual beta was implemented. And if you guys enjoy the video, definitely hit that like button and let's begin. So let's start at the beginning when League of Legends was first dreamt up as a game with the name of Onslaught. It was originally pitched as a boxed game that was going to be published under one of the more traditional game publishers. It was only after talking to a lot of the different publishers that Riot decided that they were actually going to self-publish as a free-to-play game. One thing you probably didn't know about Onslaught is that Summoner's Rift was originally messing around with the concept of a 4 vs 4 play mode, meaning there was a chance that the game could have had 4 people on each team rather than 5, like one player in each lane and then one jungler. Now that definitely would have made things massively different to how they are now, but after some experimentation and some playtesting they decided it was going to be full on 5v5. As for the game itself, we've got some pieces of the original Summoner's Rift concept art and you can see how gritty and really just how kind of like metal Onslaught was when it was first designed. Even the background music was super metal and all the minions were like these tiny little undead things rather than what we're actually familiar with today. The red side minions looked like little skeletons with either bows or a sword and a shield depending on whether they were melee or ranged minions and for the blue side, they were kind of like these gothic knights in a suit of armor. They were later changed into little golem looking creatures since Riot decided to go for a more fantasy angle rather than like a dark and gritty theme that it had at the start. And this was just part of the tons of different iterations Onslaught went through before it was renamed to League of Legends Clash of Fates and started to become the game that we all know now. And it's probably for the best since the new version appeals to a way bigger audience now than it would have if they hadn't really changed all this stuff. Now it's not just the background music and general aesthetic that changed as well though, Summoner's Rift was massively different to what we ended up getting to play in the beta of League of Legends. For example, originally Summoner's Rift didn't have any bushes at all. No bushes whatsoever across the entire map. The original design for Summoner's Rift was intended to never have bushes and they were only finally implemented into the game during the beta phase. Now a lot of you guys that had experience with the beta know that the map back in the day had actually about twice as much bush as it does now. So although Riot did eventually add it into the game, they did cut back on it a lot after some playtesting. League of Legends at the start also never had red or blue sides either. Similar to Dota, it had two factions, Order and Chaos. And this didn't really change anything about the game, but you know, Riot decided to move away from it just to sort of distance themselves from Dota, which was probably a good move overall but it might have been more interesting to see Summoner's Rift with more of a noticeable change to the map as you moved from one side to the other, kind of like you do with Radiant and Dire in Dota 2. To be original though, Riot would have to do that as Noxus vs Demacia, and well, that kind of pushes out the rest of the other factions in the lore anyway. As well across the map, the turrets were a pretty interesting part of the design of Summoner's Rift that also went through some pretty serious changes. Riot experimented with different figures for their turrets based on what side of the map you were on. For the original Order side, the blue side, there was a dragon based turret, an angel based turret alongside a normal tower design that looks a little bit more similar to what we have now since the turrets don't actually look like creatures anymore. For Chaos, the red side, they had a turret that looked like a giant golem and one that was like this trippy, spiky, pink and purple glowing tower of doom. We also have a picture of the original shopkeeper design, which kind of looks like a female pantheon with multiple arms holding up a bunch of items. It's less of like an actual shop, more of like a shrine I guess from the looks of it, where you kind of like donate your cash and get blessed with the items that you need to be victorious. 
So with all those things in mind, you've got a game that would look entirely different to how League of Legends looks now. I mean, things could have been crazy different if Riot hadn't strayed away from the early map concepts, but that doesn't really tell us anything about the actual gameplay, and that, of course, would have been super different as well. Take summoner spells for example, you know, League of Legends was originally based off of Defense of the Ancients, off Dota, and in Dota, summoner spells didn't exist. So at the start of the game, when it was first being designed, instead of picking your summoner spells before a game, you would actually originally gain those summoner spell, those like abilities from active effects on items. Most notably, there were items like Ancient Pocket Watch, which acted as a summoner spell teleport. There were also items for flash, for exhaust, and even an item for recalling, which is built onto an item called the Blue Pill. And this was all changed into summoner spells around the time that the Chaos vs. Order concept was scrapped, and it was all done to differentiate the game from Dota and Aeon of Strife, which was a big problem that the Riders faced when they were first developing League of Legends. They really tried to come up with as many ways as possible to differentiate themselves and to just be different from Dota and other MOBA games that people had already known. And a big part of what they did with that was introducing summoner spells. But other than the summoner spells, a lot of the in-game mechanics were also changed as well because they were kind of just too similar to Dota. So originally, you know, you were able to finish off your own minions with the last hit in order to deny the gold to your laning opponents. And that was actually still part of the game right up until the second week of the alpha phase when it was removed. Assists also never used to exist in League of Legends. At the start, you know, champion kills only gave 100 gold. It made things really snowball-y because items took way longer to get, even though they were less expensive at the time. So really powerful champions that got early kills could get really far ahead and be just pretty much unstoppable. It would have made things really crazy to watch for an esport if it was still like that today, but maybe not the best idea for competitive play to have things be that swingy overall. Also, no one would ever want to play support, which is probably not the best idea. Another notable change that Riot made to the game during the alpha stage was that the super minions actually had 10% critical strike chance, so taking down an inhibitor made things even more difficult to deal with than they are now. The champions themselves as well were originally designed around the power levels of Dota, and when summoner spells were finally introduced, that ended up making them so much more powerful because really they just became so incredibly strong because they were never intended to have summoner spells from the start, you know. That's really why so many of the beta champions were just so overpowered. Most of the crowd control effects lasted twice as long, all the abilities did way more damage overall, you know, the champions were kind of like haymakers almost. They were slower, less mobile, had some really crippling mana costs on their abilities as well, but if they hit, oh man, they hit really damn hard. You know, I don't want to go too much into the original champions since we've really talked about them so much before in previous abilities, but one thing that was really different that we've also kind of touched over a little bit was the champion select. So champions were originally separated into three different classes, strong, deadly, and arcane. The strong champions were like the bruisers and tanks, and deadly champions are like the, you know, the glass cannons, and arcane is like the mages. So you can actually find the original League of Legends champion select on Line, and it's a pretty cool feature. Interestingly enough, a lot of the champions originally had really different names to what they ended up being. You know, Ash was originally named Chloe Nil, and instead of skins, they had different costumes. You know, right before the beta launch, the client was changed to the more well known version, which looked a lot more modern. And this was to the point where players could actually start trying out League finally. And a lot of the original parts were left designs, a lot of the names of things were changed, you know, the champion classes were gone, and well, some of the champions were removed entirely, like a Verdry and Tabu, but overall the champion selects come a really long way. There's one other thing that we haven't mentioned that really never made it into the game though, you know, some features that Riot was actually working on during the beta, during the original development of the game, and these are some features that we actually still don't have today. So of those, so of those features, it includes but is not limited to voice chat, replays, and clans, all of which were planned features that were in development back in the day, but you know, still after all these years have never really become a part of the game. You know, it's kind of disappointing to know that those things were in development for such a long time, so long ago, 
and were never really introduced. The only feature we know about that was in development that was actually released was the ability to have customizable in-client tournaments, and originally it was designed to be a lot more sophisticated, but it came in the version of something that was super, super dumbed down that is a little bit difficult to access. You kind of need to go through Riot, and the in-client tournament system is just so weird, and a lot of you guys probably don't even know that it exists, or you wouldn't even know how to use it, but originally they were intending to have a much more sophisticated thing that you could queue up for and could play tournaments against randomly matched players. Anyway, that just about covers everything we know about Onslaught and the other original versions of League of Legends Clash of Fates. You know, there's been a ton of stuff to get through, so hopefully you guys all found this interesting and learned some cool things about League of Legends that might have changed the way that it was played massively if they ended up still being in the game today. Either way, looks like that's going to be it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like, subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.